Opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of the station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. Hi, I'm Andrew Harris with BC Lines. You're watching The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. Hi everybody and welcome to The Huddle. I'm Scott Taylor. This is John Mackey, the Technical Director of Football Manitoba. And we have a bit of a special show today. Um, we only have two people on, other than you. Um, <laughs> special guests. Spe so. Two special guests. Yeah. Um, Dave Donaldson, who will do my favorite um, uh, part of the whole show. What the <laughs> ref? Um, uh, Dave's always wonderful to have on the show. And then yeah. we've got a very special guest in Andrew Harris, um, former Grant Park and Oak Park running back. Um, now with the BC Lions, and he's played pretty well in BC. Yeah, I would, I would say so. He's probably one of the top Canadians playing the game. Well, he would be because he was a CFL All-Star this year, and he did um, set a Canadian Football League record as most uh, uh, cumulative yards by a Canadian player in the CFL, breaking Terry Evans' record. Um, a, a huge season for him. It's Andrew unbelievable Harris. to have a Winnipeg kid do that. You know, former Eastman Raider. Actually. Former Eastman uh, Raider, that's where he started. He's, he's yeah. played all of his minor football here in Winnipeg and then went out to Vancouver Island and starred in the Junior Football League. And, uh, Won three BC championships. <laughs> and broke all the records there. Any kind of record you see Andrew Harris, I think he might even had some passing records. <laughs> he's, 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 uh, he was an unbelievable football player in junior football, and BC Lions decided, hey, we need to have him on our roster yeah, right he never, away. He never got to the draft. No. Nope. He was strictly a territorial protection yep. of the Lions exactly. and has been outstanding since. I mean, his rookie season, he, he kind of sat around and did a whole bunch of different things, Absolutely. a lot of special teams, then won the starting job, and now he is one of the two best running backs in the Canadian Football League. We're very fortunate to have him here. It's going to be a great show. Andrew Harris of the BC Lions will be our very special guest today. Uh, more than one segment with Andrew. This is the huddle. Come on back. We're going to do What the Ref with Dave Donaldson. <laughs> we'll do that after this. It's the huddle, community created on Shaw TV. Welcome back. Another beautiful day in Winnipeg. It's time for the huddles. What the Ref? Dave Donaldson uh, joins us again. David, um, We've kind of had some fun with this, these what the ref calls, but I got a call that um, I yell at the, at, at the TV as much as anybody when these things are called. Cut blocks. Right. Explain to me who can and who can't cut block, because I swear I've seen guys that I know have the right to cut block, and they still get called for it. So clear it up for us. Who can cut block, who can't, when can they do it, when can't they do it? Okay, well, to ask your question really quickly, it's not going to be a quick answer, really okay, quickly. I'll just sit back. Uh, so yeah. sit back. Uh, defenders cannot cut. So let's, let's just get that out the way right away. Defenders cannot cut. If we're talking amateur football, which we do as well as yeah, sure. professional football, mm -hmm. um, receivers cannot cut in amateur football. They cannot cut. they got to stay up, okay? Okay. So if a receiver's going out to block for a running back coming, he can't drop and cut a guy off. He has to stay up and push a guy. Correct. Okay. But in the Canadian Football League, a forward pass behind the line of scrimmage, uh, which would be a screen pass, a forward sure. pass behind the line of scrimmage, receivers can cut in that so, instance. So if, there, if there's a screen pass, a receiver can drop on a guy and take him out at the knees? Correct. Okay. In the CFL, in not the, in, amateur in amateur football. football. So the Bisons can't do it, the Rifles can't do it, the Midgets can't do it. And if I'm wrong, with regards to those names you've just brought up, the junior football in the college, I'll come back on the next segment and clear <laughs> that up with you, okay? We never wanted to get anything wrong, and I never want to tell you something I don't know. But I, from my understanding, CFL football, the, our pro league in Canada, that's the only time a receiver can cut. Okay, so I'm a blocking back, and I'm, I'm, I'm the blocking back in the BC Lions for Andrew Harris. Yep. Um, they hand the ball to Andrew, I'm the first guy through, can I cut somebody off? Yes. But if I'm a receiver or a slot back, I can't do it. Correct. But I get the right to do that as a blocking back. Correct. As well, if we're talking about blocking backs on special teams, a uh, punt team, where you got uh, personal protectors, up backs, which are usually guys like Andrew Harris, who's a running back, they usually have those guys at that position yep. as the up back, um, traditionally. Um, they can cut block. So cut, you can cut block on kick return, punt returns. No, as, uh, on punt. On punt. Cover. Punt, cover, you can... Right. So you're the cover team, not, not the receiving team. Right. The cover team can cut block to take the wedge out. Right. 
Uh, when the, when the, when, when the guys are coming in to block, Boy, it's confusing for you guys. Well, you no wonder you're wrong so often. You, you know, to be honest, with you, it's actually quite straightforward. <laughs> it's it's more confusing for the players. But if the players realize that uh, on a change of possession, so let's say there's an interception or anything of that sort, there's no cutting at all. Period. Period. There's no cutting on special teams unless you're the up back pressure protector on punt. That's the only time, and those are the running backs anyway. So they know how to do that. Yes. And that's what they've been doing. Outside of that. I think that's the only time, you know, and as amateur football players, we should teach our young men and women to stay up anyways because you're only going to hurt someone when you get down there and cut. Or maybe so, yourself. Or, your, or yourself. So why don't you practice the game doing it the right way anyways? And then if you're a little too soft or too weak at the pro level to stand up and block someone, well, you have the right to cut someone. So You're saying running backs are too, too slow well, and too weak? not so much. They, they're going up against guys that are 290 sometimes. They've got to do what they have True to do. Enough. you got to do what you have to do. Right. I think that was clear. I Good. got it. Awesome. I hope everybody else did. Awesome. Dave Donaldson, our segment, What the Ref. When we come back, we'll have lots more on the huddle. Scott Taylor, Dave Donaldson, thanks for joining us. It's Community Created on Shaw TV. This is the huddle. I'm Scott Taylor, and normally... Uh, when we have Dave Donaldson on, we do what the ref, because Dave is a, an official uh, both at the CIS and the amateur football level and with the Canadian Football League. But Dave also is still a football guy. Um, after 10 years in the uh, Canadian Football League, there's still a lot of football in this guy. And one of the things that he does um, every year is the Premier Football Factory. It's that big camp clinic that he holds over three days at the University of Manitoba out at the uh, soccer complex. Right. This year, um, I was out there. John Mackey I saw coaching this year. Um, Andrew Harris was out coaching this year. We had Rod Hill out. This was one of the great camps I'd ever seen. Um, you guys did a wonderful job. And I think you should be pretty proud of the fact that... Um, uh, what, about 130 kids total showed up this year? Yeah, 80 kids at the, the 14 to 18 year old camp and uh, qu quite a, about 40 at the younger right. kids camp for the 9 to 13 year olds. Did you see some players that you liked? You know, um, we always see players at our camp that, um, that we like. And, you know, I'm just lucky to have the guys surrounded, you know, that surround us and coach the kids. Guys like Andrew who showed up this year. Um, who's a local guy, who's an MVP of the Grey Cup. That was tremendous. Lamar, um, McGriggs, Lamar was McGriggs was there. Lamar McGriggs. Gavin Walls was there. Uh, Glenn um, Scrivener. Glenn Scrivener was there. Brett, Brett McNeil. McNeil. You know, all these guys are all Grey Cup. You know, there's five guys. If we're, we're, You're asking me a question, and I'm thinking to myself, because I never thought about it before. Five guys out of that crew um, are all Grey Cup champions. Like, not just guys that participated in the Grey Cup. Like myself, I was in the Grey Cup. I didn't win the Grey Cup, but... Uh, Andrew won a great cup, correct? Right. Um, Brett's won a great cup. Lamar's won a great cup. Um, Marcus Howell's won a great cup. Kyle Walters, the assistant course, GM, yes. has won a great cup. That's five in my hand right now. And I'm sure I'm missing someone else. But, you know, if I'm a young... Oh, Rod Hill. Oh, we were lucky to have Rod Hill just show up out the blue. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was a big fan of Rod as a young man growing up in this province. You played the same position. Yeah, and, uh, and I was near, not nearly half a, of a defensive back as he was in his time, being a number one or first-round draft pick in the NFL and then having a great career in the CFL. And to have him impart some of the knowledge and wisdom just from the weekend that just passed, it was unreal, you know. Um, and I think if I'm a Winnipeg, Manitoba boy or just anyone from Manitoba and have a chance to be part of that, you know, hopefully some of that just rubs off on them. Well, th that was the one thing that uh, Coach Mike Kelly was there. He gave a great speech, by the way. Sure and, I, and I think it was uh, uh, tremendously inspiring for the players who were there, the 80 guys who came in the afternoon. Um, but one of the most interesting things about, about what he said to me was that he had never seen in the province of Manitoba a collection of football knowledge as vast and as deep as the group that you had right. um, at this camp. I mean, we weren't just talking about, and, and I, have, I have nothing but the utmost respect for guys who are just starting to coach, guys who have been coaching two right. or three years. So do I. You, you, had a, you had a group of people who have coached and played and are coaching now and have been successful, and the knowledge that was imparted onto these young players, I don't know why every football player in Manitoba wasn't crawling at the doors to get into this. Well, thing. you know, I'm a little bit to blame. Uh, this camp's been going on for, I'd say, six years. We started off in a gym at Tech Vock years ago when Rob Bailey was the technical director of Football Manitoba, which was quite a, year, a few years back. And, you know, to have the, the partnership of Football Manitoba, so to have them allow us to do this camp and house their kids and, and actually have John Mackey, who's, who's, who's a Bison coach and the technical director, come out and actually, you know... Coach the quarterbacks. Coach the quarterbacks, but not only that, have a chance to recruit while he's there. Um, you know... 
you know, these kids, they need, they need a, a venue, you know, a place for them to, to showcase what they have to offer. And we didn't think we'd get to that level. We just wanted to develop the kids and get them better. And with the knowledge base that we surround ourselves with, we've gotten it to another level, it seems, and we have to continue because it, um, it seems like there's a need for it. And, um, and I'm glad that we're here for them. I saw a lot of good players. This Julian Whitnick that uh, played at the Nomads, the Midgets, well, heck of a quarterback. Well, you know, I had a chance to officiate him uh, one time, like, two years ago, and, and I was in awe. Um, and to see him at our camp and to see what he's capable of doing, like, he should be playing somewhere at the next level. I don't know where, uh, but he should be playing somewhere. And hopefully, you know, Coach Mackey sees a little something in him and, and picks him up because if he doesn't, somebody else will because he's that talented. And we are lucky to have him. He obviously he's willing to do whatever it takes to get to the next level for, for signing up and taking the initiative to beat our camp. So that says a lot about Julian. And uh, he showed a lot of leadership qualities, and um, he has a great character, and he's an outstanding football player. And there's really a quite a few kids at our camp that were. Hey, Kai Madsen was a nice little player. He was too. just on my mind, the receiver from Save Hotel. He's about this big. He's a little guy, but um, you know, Jim Sandusky was a little guy. And <laughs> so was Steve Large, and we can go on and on. This kid is phenomenal. Phenomenal. And I don't know how old he is. I think he's only 15 at the 15. moment. So imagine where he's going to be at. Um, I'm just hoping he's a bison. Cause, well, you know, I, think, I think Mackie likes him a lot. Good. I think Mackie's a good fan. Dave, thanks a lot. Oh, thank you. That was great. Dave Donaldson from the Premier Football Factory. When we come back, um, we're going to talk to uh, Andrew Harris of the British Columbia Lions. Um, we'll do that when we come back after this. This is The Huddle. Scott Taylor, Dave Donaldson. It is Community Created on Shaw TV. As promised... And welcome back to the huddle. Uh, Scott Taylor along with, um, um, would, would you be the greatest player ever to come out of Winnipeg? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't want to say that. There's, a, there's been a lot of good guys, but uh, hopefully I'm uh, making a push for it, though. Andrew Harris um, of the British Columbia Alliance, who, uh, of course, was the most valuable Canadian in the 2011 Grey Cup game. And this year, um, uh, first team, well, there's only one team now. There used to be two teams in the CFL All-Star selections, but you were um, CFL All-Star and a 1,000-yard rusher. And you set the Canadian record for most all-purpose yards in a season, yeah. breaking Terry Evans' mark. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, I want to go back right to the start. Not quite the day you were born, but I want to go back to when you started to play football. Yeah. Um, where did you start? Why did you start? Um, is this something you always wanted to do, or did somebody find you and convince you to play? Yeah, you, well, I moved up to Steinbach uh, when I was in grade five. And, you know, I went to elementary school there, uh, grade five, six. And then uh, there was... Um, some kind of barbecue or some kind of event we had and uh, we had always played football at recess and stuff so we had a little touch game going on and I was still in the ball and running and one of the coaches for the Eastman Raiders uh, came up to me and said you know you're pretty athletic and uh, you can throw the ball pretty good and, uh, and you're a pretty, pretty, pretty quick kid so um, he said why don't you come out for football this, this summer or, or this, uh, this fall here and uh, so I said uh, okay cool I'll come try it out and next thing I know I was a starting running back for the, for the Eastman Raiders and uh, a backup quarterback and um, and then um, once I played there for two or three years, uh, I moved back to the city and, and um, I had a lot of my friends that I grew up with in the Harrow area there, Grand Park area, we're all at Grand Park and playing football and stuff. So um, I went to Grand Park for grade, grade 10, 11, and then I moved on to grade 12 uh, to go to Oak Park. Now, we hate to hear the word recruit yeah. um, around high school football in Manitoba, but there had to be a reason why you went <laughs> from Grant Park to Oak Park. Now, we all know Oak Park's had a great uh, program for a long, long yeah. time. Why did you decide to go to Oak Park and play there? There's a few reasons. Uh, number one, the biggest thing for me was, you know, I was I was kind of in a bad group of friends, and and not not a bad group of friends. It just was, I was kind of on going the, the edge. Yeah, I was going the wrong direction, and uh, and I didn't like where I was kind of heading, and and I could kind of foresee where I'd be if I stayed stuck around there. So that was one reason. Uh, the second reason was um, Stu Nixon, who was uh, right. one, the main guy who kind of got me to come to Ground Park. That, that grade 10 year, he ended up leaving and going to uh, help uh, replace Bramwell's job. And as we all know, Oak Park's been a really strong powerhouse for many years, and so he went out there to, to take over there. So um, I, I kind of followed him. So and, you followed and, uh, a coach? Yeah, yeah a coach, and, and just and, and the direction of where I was going. So, you know, it, it was tough. You know, I had to drive half an hour every day to go to school, and where, where at Ground Park, I literally walked across the field and I was at school. So it was definitely an adjustment, and, you know, just the mentality of the kids from Ground Park to Oak Park was a bit of an adjustment too, but uh, it definitely helped, though, to where I am today. It is a great football program, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, definitely. Now, you decided not to go to university. You decided to play junior football. Tell us why. Uh, another thing, yeah, another reason. It wasn't uh, that I decided 
decided to do that. I, I committed to go to uh, Laurier uh, in uh, in Waterloo in Ontario. And, uh, I'm a Guelph grad. I don't much like Laurier. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and uh, I was actually getting heavily recruited from UND where Don Alexander right. played. And sure. uh, I think Brett uh, Cameron's down there now yeah. too, mm -hmm. a couple of local guys. So, yeah, I, I was getting recruited heavily down there. And um, my last my last grade marks came in and, you know, I didn't I – didn't, um, quite get the grades I needed to, to get to get down there or, or to go east so you know I thought I was gonna initially just play one year of uh, or two years of junior and then and then go back to school um, so I played one or two years and you know the Bisons were heavily recruiting me and you know all these other eastern teams are uh, uh, answering or calling me and trying to get me to come back and and go back to school but you know we had won one national championship already, already. I saw two guys that were getting BC Lions looks um, and we are we're on the verge to go undefeated again the next year and had a really good team So you, I said I'll play another year. Oh, okay. Now I'm getting invited to BC Lions. I'll play another year You know yeah, and now, you're winning national championships. Yeah, and winning national championships. So um, again, you know being in, on the island You know, there's mountains there's ocean and you know, it's beautiful out there So it was uh, it was an easy sell for me to stay there and it was a good family vibe And that's one of the reasons why you won national championships if you ask anyone who's won a, ch a national championship or a championship you have to have a good group of guys uh, to trust each other, and it needs to be a family. And that's exactly what we had. And, you know, I, I'm still really close with all those guys uh, from out there. So um, a big, big, big key factor why I stayed out there was just that family atmosphere and the, and the winning attitude and, and the fact that, you know, I was 20 years old and I was going to practice the BC Lions and, and have opportunities to, to, to make the CFL. Our guest is Andrew Harris of the British Columbia Lions. Of course, the uh, second leading rusher in the CFL this year. Uh, third, third. Third yeah. leading rusher in the CFL. Yeah. A most... Uh, All-purpose yards uh, by any Canadian since Terry Evanson in '67. Mm -hmm. um, you're a running back, obviously. Yeah. Do you enjoy returning kicks and punts? And well, yeah, that's that's kind of how I made my uh, made it made it on the team. You know, I, I was the off returner. Um, so at that time that year, we had Giannis Davis, who was like a, a prodigy, a, a freak returner. So I got lots of returns. I think I I think I had almost uh, 1,200 yards in returns in my, my first year in the CFL. So you know that was that was a big eye opener and and. When you, when you play specials, the change of direction and, and the change of possession is just so fast. And it really, once you get on offense, everything kind of slows down, calms down. And uh, it was an easy, easier adjustment for me to play on specials to get, get, get used to those guys coming down full blast that you will try yeah, to you can get killed playing yeah, special yeah, teams. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, you know, so uh, it was a good I got to know, for a yeah. guy like yourself, yeah. you see those guys coming at you. Is there fear or is it going so fast you don't even notice? Um, well, the first thing is when you when the ball's coming up, you're like, I got to catch this thing first, and you're always trying to scan and, and, and pick a hole before before it comes. But when that ball's coming down, and you can kind of judge when you're going to get the ball and where that guy's going to be, but sometimes, you know, it hangs up a little bit. You know, you're playing in Saskatchewan or Winnipeg, and you get that, uh, that wind, wind come yep. through, and, it, you know, it'll, it'll go back on you or drop dead. So, you know, there's lots of challenges to go along with it, but that just makes the game fun. But uh, for me, it wasn't the, the fact of getting killed. It was like, okay, I want to I get some yards here, so... Um, well, yeah, yeah, but you, well, you do get five yards on the Canadian game. Yeah. There are some guys who tend to forget that from time to time. And the thing, too, is guys are getting good at timing it up, and, and you can tell based on how the returner is judging it where, and where he's going to catch the ball and, and just by his mannerisms of, uh, you know, and, and you watch film on this stuff, too. But you can kind of tell when the guy's going to catch the ball. So guys time it up, they'll slow down oh, at about 20 yards if they think that, uh, that the guy's not even close to it, and then they'll time it up where that guy's getting the ball, and they're right there. And, you know, when, when you're running full speed at five yards, uh, it doesn't, doesn't take long. to. Linebackers to, hurt, don't they? Yes, yeah, so, some of them do. Some of them do, for sure. You're, you're, you're in, uh, on the island. You're playing in Nanaimo. Yeah. You're loving it. Um, and you're doing well. You're winning championships, and, and, and you're getting big numbers. Uh, you've got a chance either to go in the draft or be a territorial protection. What happens is you're a territorial protection for the BC Lions. You don't get to go in the draft. No. Um, would you have preferred the draft, or did you like it the way things happened to you? You know, now that I think about it and, you know, I see all these guys come out and the whole process is ex exciting. You go to the evaluation camp, you're there with, you know, 60 of the best players in the country. Um, it's, a, it's a cool process, the whole, the whole draft order and then, you know, sitting uh, when the draft's on TV, waiting by the phone or wherever you are. I think that would have been a cool process and I don't know where I would have been in the draft um, for my draft year. Um, but, you know, I'm pretty sure I would have been pretty high and the whole, whole excitement about that would have been pretty exciting. And the whole thing, too, is that a team is picking you based on their want for you, right? So, mm -hmm. I, when, you know, being a territorial exemption, I'm only there for that team. And that's the only team that can really see me and, 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 and bring me off if they want to. So just that just the excitement to kind of be, you know, out there for everyone to kind of evaluate. And that, that, that part would have been pretty cool. But uh, the way I did it, it was amazing because, you know, 20 years old at camp, I get, I'm a project, so I get brought to the system, you know. Now, so, how many years did you play junior when you went to your first camp? Um, I played three years of junior, yeah. 
So 18, 19, and then 20. Yeah, 20 years old. And then you went to camp at 20 years old. Yeah. So I I, I went to camp as a slot back originally. I was behind Jason Claremont. So that part of it too, you know, I I went and learned the receiver position. And now if you, just the transition of, you know, how I catch the ball in the backfield has made a big difference in in, in my game. And, you know, I think if I lost a step in in a couple years or, you know, another guy came in that they wanted to put in, I, I think I could play receiver. And the CFL and and be and be that dynamic as, as well. Well, that's so, something you don't hear very often. I lose yeah. a step and play receiver. But yeah, that's the thing. Well, it, it just <laughs> as a running back, you need to be explosive, and you need to be, and it needs to be every time you touch that ball, you know. And, and it, it happens. It's natural. It's part of the game. You lose a step, and there and there's always, uh, you know, running back's a young man's position. You know, there's always mm-hmm. that guy that's going to come in there and be that firecracker. So you know, you need to be explosive and then always always that guy so you know and they're always trying to bring americans in and out and stuff too so you know there's always someone out there that's uh that's eager to play and you know that can uh, that get that job done it was kind of a strange year though where you get two canadians um both of a thousand yards rushing Mm -hmm. um did you get a little bit tired of being compared to john cornish as the year went on yeah you know the story's great you know yeah like the the two canadians were a thousand yard rushers you know we're both in the west and you know there's a bunch of good storylines but uh when people start comparing me us on the field and how we play we're, we're totally different totally different players. We run, we run different. We, you know, everything we do is different. Off the field, we're completely different. You know, he came from a big uh, NC2A school. I came from a little junior league, you know, and, uh, you know, just how we portray ourselves in the media, everything, we're totally different. So, you know, again, the story was great. The fact that we broke records and uh, we were, you know, two 2,000 yard rushers, that didn't happen since Norm Kwan and um, another guy, Terry Young, I think it is. Yeah. Or Jer- no, Jerry James. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry James. Jerry James. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, th- th- it's a great 1956. story. 1956. Yeah. So yeah, you date back. You're, that's 50 years ago, 50 plus years ago. So it's pretty amazing to be part of that. And there's definitely a lot of pride that goes along with that. But uh, just the comparisons on personality and and our play was uh, a little bit annoying. But what do you got in your finger? Uh, it's a little bling here. It's pretty big. It's pretty large. <laughs> yeah. It's just about the biggest ring I think I've ever seen in my life. This is actually the first time I've actually worn it out in Winnipeg and, and been out and kind of showed people. I've been kind of nervous about bringing it out, you know. Just well, look at the size <laughs> of it. It's as big as a trophy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, you won that in 2011. Tell yeah. us about that experience of not only winning a great cup game, but being the, uh, the most valuable Canadian in the game. It was amazing, you know, the, the week leading up to it was very exhausting because we have to go here, we have to go there, there's media this, media that. And the whole story of, of me being from Winnipeg and playing against my, my home team was uh, was definitely a hot topic. So it, it, for me, that was my big exposure and, you know, I was finally the starter and, you know, I started half of the, the year. So it was, uh, it was a big adjustment for me because I wasn't used to getting all that attention. And, and uh, so it was kind of hard to focus on the game. You know, it was definitely hard to focus on the game. And, um, there was one day I just I just shot everything off my phone everything and I just sat and you know just watched film and I focused and I dialed in and that that day was that was which huge for me because that was really when I felt okay I still have to go win a football game all this other stuff is is kind of put on the back burner and then you know you get in that field and you know they got the they got the the sky cam and they got everything going and you know you, 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 it's there you see the Grey Cup logo and then then everything kind of went away and the nerves were kind of done and. Um, and then we just played, and, and you know, I don't remember any real, any real plays individually, but just the whole process of it all. And then all of a sudden, it was like, boom, we're up on, the, I'm up on the stage, I'm getting the MVC trophy. <laughs> you know, it's like raising the cup. I'm just like, wow. So the yeah. whole afternoon just kind of flew by. It flew by the whole, yeah. And then, and then again after the game, we, you know, we did the champagne and everything, and then we did a little press conference after. And then I had a, we had a big party at the hotel we were staying at, and uh, it was open bar, and you know there's tons of family and friends in my room, and I'm like everyone just get out, like I needed to just lay down for a bit. So I laid down for like two hours after the game, had a nice little nap, and and uh, I was just so exhausted, you know, it was just a roller coaster. It's here, 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 and the whole whole week leading up to it, it was just amazing. But uh, after it was all said and done, and I just enjoyed the night, and it, it was a great experience. And that was the result. Yeah, that was the result right there, and yeah, it, it, it's a, it's just crazy too. The the league's been around for so long, you know, hundred years. And there's guys that played this in this league for years, 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, and never never had a chance to, to play in a great cup, let alone win one. So, you know, it's uh, definitely a great experience and something I'm always going to remember. And, you know, I'm just I'm just trying to get more rings on my finger now and, and continue this legacy. Okay, I would be remiss if I didn't ask one important question. At some point in your career, would you like to play for your hometown team? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I grew up watching Charles Roberts and, and Milt Stiegel and, Going to going to Bombers games and you know even when I got older the Rum Hut and the whole thing it's just it's just the just the feel about being a hometown boy playing here and um, you know that, that that'd be something I'd love to do eventually I don't I don't know when or, or how or well certainly you know, not next year yeah you know not I'm not saying tomorrow but uh, it'd, it'd be nice to maybe end my career here or or some some point in time I'll be here and be a Blue Bomber for sure. 
Andrew Harris, thank you very much. Thanks very much. Andrew Harris of the British Columbia Alliance. Um, the next cover boy on the huddle, um, the next edition of the huddle comes out in uh, early February, and it will be available all over Manitoba. Um, so make sure you pick one up with Andrew Harris on the cover of our next magazine. When we come back, lots to talk about. This is the huddle. Thanks to Andrew Harris. It's community created on Shaw TV. I'm here to teach you about playing safe. Wesley lost his hand in a machinery accident. Now he gives play safe presentations at schools to warn kids that accidents can happen anywhere. Play safe! Yeah! Play safe! Okay, Andrew, one of the things we like to do on this show with our high school kids and with our midget and uh, major kids is um, we like to ask them 10 questions. Makes it easy, it's simple stuff, and it's a great way to get to know exactly what you like and don't like. <laughs> So here comes our 10 questions. All right. You're prepared? I'm ready. What's your favorite TV show? Uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Boy, that's a throwback. Yeah. I used to do the marathon. Uh, I used to do it on uh, Much Music. So yeah. I used to skip school to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your favorite sport other than football? Hockey. Definitely hockey. And you do play a lot of hockey these yeah, days. Yeah, I play about two or three times a week actually still. So. Still Jets are back. Is. Yeah. Want to go try out? I know. I need to get on a Evander Kane's line or something. And me, me, him, and uh, Bermistra, that'd be good. <laughs> Your favorite music? Uh, R&B. Yeah. I like the slow music before the game. Calm me down. Yeah. <laughs> Your favorite musical entertainer? Um, the Weeknd. Really? Yes. That's yeah. interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, you were on streets on the Huddle uh, radio show, and yeah. you, you have some other people that you like, too. Yeah, French Montana, but he's yeah. more of a, a rapper. And actually, if you want to go with the old school, Genuine. You know, oh, no kidding. Tony. All right. <laughs> you know that one? Genuine, too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What would you be doing if you weren't playing football? Oh, that's a tough question. You know what? I, I think I'd probably... I'd probably be in real estate. You know, I, I bought my first place and I really enjoy it. And I have a, I have a good friend who um, who's a real estate agent in Vancouver. So we're actually going to try to team up this year. And Boy, that's a heck of a place to sell real estate, yeah, too. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I don't know if I'd be in there right away, but that's something I want to do. And eventually well, that's what I want to do after I'm done playing football as well. When you're not training for football or playing football, what do you like to do? Um, I have a, a five-year-old daughter, so she uh, keeps me pretty busy. So I'm, I spend a lot of time with her. And that's definitely uh, where a lot of my time gets consumed. Yeah, so. it really does, and yeah. it will for a long time yeah, yet, for too. Sure. Um, your favorite movie of all time? Uh, favorite movie? Uh, there's a movie called Antoine Fisher. I don't know if you've heard oh, of yeah, it. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good movie. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It's not, it's not like a, a big mainstream movie, but uh, it's definitely one of my favorites for sure. Artsy, indie stuff. Yeah. Favorite actor? Actress. Uh, actress. Or, uh, actress, I think Megan Good is uh, extremely gorgeous, and uh, actor, I'd probably say Denzel Washington. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's pretty spectacular. Yeah. Um, favorite athlete other than yourself? Adrian Peterson. Yeah, no, he's a, yeah, he's remarkable amazing. story, isn't it? Yeah, that definitely. comeback this year? Yeah, I like him, and actually McFadden is very, a, a very good uh, athlete as well. With, too, with yeah, the Oakland Raiders. Oakland Raiders, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, the final question is always the most intriguing. We find out the most about you with yeah. this one. Betty or Veronica? Veronica. Yes, definitely Veronica. You're the first ever. Yeah? You're the first nice. Veronica. She's all mine. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, thanks so thanks much. For Andrew Harris, um, and we'll be back to talk more on The Huddle. Uh, this is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Well, what a show. Um, that's The Huddle for another week. John Mackey, um, Andrew Harris is something else, isn't he? Fantastic. A class act, too. You know, you'd think, uh, you know, big CFL superstar. Uh, no, he's he's down to earth. You know, he's he's not. He doesn't have. And, a big and the most amazing thing is, is that people don't understand that he lives in Winnipeg for the <laughs> entire year. Yeah. If you have a sportsman's dinner or a football dinner or a hockey dinner, and you want one of the great athletes in Canada, um, mm -hmm. s soon to be, I think, Manitoba's athlete of the year for 2012. That's right. um, who better than Andrew Harris? And he's in town. If if he called, if you call football Manitoba, you want Andrew Harris to speak at your dinner? Just just give him a call. Absolutely, we'll uh, we'll set him up with any type of function that you guys have. Uh, he's a great speaker. He was on the radio uh, that the morning, and uh, he's got a voice for radio, but a, and a, a smile for the cameras too. So yeah, he's I mean, uh, he's going to be on the cover of our magazine, uh, our next issue, and the, the uh, February issue of the Huddle. Yeah, yeah and and what a great guy, and Tremendous. he's got a. A, a very good story to tell is his path through football and and uh, how it's taken to him, taken him to where he is now. And uh, if you want to listen to it personally, then it's sign him up. Good. Give me a call. Yep, <laughs> good stuff. John Mackey, uh, Scott Taylor. This is the huddle. Thanks for joining us. We're community created on Shaw TV. We'll see you next week.
The opinions expressed on the program you have just watched are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of this station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view.